here we are, oh fuck, in another beautiful S14A. This car is really nice. Welded diff in a gravel car park. Welded diff. Everyone at this roundabout is a complete drip though, that's the trouble. <laughs> What's up guys? So today we are in a S14A. Now this one has a very long list of parts which I'll include again in the description as usual. So at the moment we're running low boost which is 290 brake horsepower but I'll get a little bit used to it, get the car warm on the low boost and then we'll go into the high boost which is around 350. the cloth seats as well to me as an old man it feels a lot nicer to drive than the one with the leather seats only because i think the leather feels a bit cheap and a bit horrible it feels really comfortable actually i'm actually really really impressed with these seats although they're probably not as hugging as you'd want them to be you know in a drift car i think as a daily drifter it's quite nice and they feel really really good you know you wouldn't have many back problems in them a lot of things really really done well in this car actually I like this gauge pod in the uh, in the heat event here. I've never seen that before. It feels very need for speed. It feels very drifty in here. I like this long gear stick as well. It feels nice to the touch, I think the word is. Suede steering wheel feels good. Feels really nice on the palm. Do you know, you can really feel that welded diff want to just send you sideways everywhere. It's quite nice though. It's quite a nice experience, I must admit. As we're going into a town before we're able to open this up we'll see what this car's like as a town driver i must admit the front end is a little bit low on this car so i'm a little bit interested to find out what it's like over the little bumps and stuff like that a lot of these you get in you feel they feel very molested i think the word is um they feel very used and very tampered with this one feels really good actually i'm really impressed with it, it seems to go into gear and clutch and accelerate a brake feels really nice the modifications that have done to it feel really good they feel like they've been done properly by someone that knows what they're talking about rather than just throwing it together and hoping it works when they go sideways considering these are, are very popular these days it's a bit of a worry that some of them have been thrown together i like the cut off switch here that's quite good that's proper race we like that sort of thing as we're warmed up we'll put her in higher boost yeah that's that's definitely more boost there fuck me <laughs> you can definitely feel the difference in uh in power and noise as well. Fuck me, this lights the tires up. Literally put your foot, I'll put my foot down in third then and it just lit the rear tires up. Yeah, you need to be quite wary of, uh, of what you're doing because uh, yeah, that definitely uh, lit the tires up in third gear then. <laughs> but that is what you want in a drift car. You want it to be lighting the rear tires up straight away. Fucking hell. Do you know, on high boost, this thing is pretty fucking mental. Around 350 brake horsepower, but the way it uses that 350 is pretty fucking insane, if I'm honest. It really knows how to uh, make your bum twitch, I think the word is. <laughs> and it makes the right noises, all the choo-choo-choo noises, and all the turbo noises as you come on boost. But going through the revs, everything sort of lights up, and you see all the dials go round. Awesome experience, really, just from the dial's perspective. <laughs> oh, nice big pot there as well. <laughs> I do really like these, and I wouldn't mind one myself, but I've never been too much of a fan of the thought of being uncomfortable in one. Very impressed with this one, though. It is actually still comfortable, in my opinion, being this low, being this sort of, you know, modified, as you would like to say. It still feels good, and it still feels comfortable, and it's still feels like you could actually drive it as a daily as you know a car that you wouldn't mind taking wherever you need to go and then having a little bit of fun when you want to have some fun and that, I think that's a good compromise you've got performance you want you've got the slideability you want but you've also got the comfort and the usability you want you you know you've got best of both worlds in this car which is exactly where I'd want it to be and I like the green I think it's a lovely metallic -y sort of really rich green and with the gold wheels and the gold half cage in the back it ties in really well with the car and i think if 
you were to say, I've got a green car with gold wheels on it, it doesn't sound right in your head, but when you see it, it looks awesome. So let's have a little pull in this car, see what the power is like, just make sure we are in full power mode. I like the way on idle as well, it's like banging, it goes and I like that. So let's cycle through the gears and see how this thing goes, shall we? wants to light the rear wheels up it really really does <laughs> even in second gear then when the boost came on at about 3,000 revs it just wanted to light the rear wheels up it's fucking awesome <laughs> I love rear wheel drive it's such a good experience it really really is <laughs> thing just wants to light the rear up I love it so guys change the scenery I'm usually in a lovely gravel car park for this, but although it looks fantastic today, it is a little bit windy, although it's still warm, but looks very majestic with the, you know, countryside and that. Really, really do like this sort of position. Japanese car, English sort of background looks pretty good. So let's have a quick look around this car. Now, straight away, I love this sort of style front bumper with the lip on it. Um, it looks really, really good. It looks right with the car. Um, quite bloody low though, isn't she? I mean, two, well, three, just over three, maybe four fingers. So it's definitely going to take a beating if you were going to uh, take it down any dodgy roads. Do like the front on these though. The aggressive, more aggressive front to the other ones, um, like the S13s. Although I do love the pop-up headlights, so I do prefer this. The S14, so you know, the one with the, you know, sort of more square headlights, um, you know, I think this is the best shape they made of this era. I like this lightning bolt as well. Someone in the comments will tell me exactly what that means. I'm assuming it's the S body range or something like that. Don't actually know myself. No grill there, but it's all right. It's for more race car stuff, you know, getting the air in there. The green is my actual favorite color, apart from purple, obviously. Um, the purple and the green, it just looks really nice. It's quite a deep green. Um, I think when you see one, you see one sort of drive past and then you'll see one and actually look at it properly. The paintwork is really, really nice on these. Um, this one is in fantastic condition as well, it really is. Um, wheels, BBS replicas. Now, I know a lot of people will probably want to see, you know, some fucking Japanese wheels on this, but I think this actually suits this car. The way it's been set up, so the stance it's been set up is, uh, is just right. It's enough to, you know, make the car still usable. It's low enough so it looks cool, but it's not over the top and you can't drive it. And it fits, it all fits. All the wheels sort of fit in the fenders. Uh, the back fits fantastic in the, in the wheel arch. Looks really, really good. And from the back as well, a bit around here, a bit more fuller. Really, really like that. This hasn't had too much body work, I think, done to it, apart from the side skirt. But I do like that touch. That's the only sort of thing, apart from this lip, maybe but that might be standard. I'm sure someone in the comments can tell me that as well. But yeah, I do like the look and the sort of presence this car has without going to body kits and massive, you know, BN kit and all this. It looks subtle and suitable and it looks clean. And I really, really do like, like that sort of look. It looks really good. Coming around the back, tinted windows. I actually quite like it on this car where it's a bit more subtle. It sort of goes with the car. Um, darkens it up a bit at the top do quite like that big big jap can on there jap speed exhaust um sounds awesome as well which i i actually quite like the way it looks with how simple the car is but this big exhaust it sort of works you know you sort of look at it from this point big exhaust but then you've got the big wheel and a big tire on there so it sort of works really well let's have a little jump inside now, first thing that I want to point out actually is how many gauges and how cool they are. I love this one in the door here. I like those two up there, that looks good. With the wheel, with the gauge in the center as well and all that cut off switch there. It's, it's got a good purpose to it. I like that the mods that have been done have been done in this way. Um, so you've still got the comfy seats, but you've got all the, you know, drifty stuff you would need to actually go sideways and to you know check your pressures and all this sort of business so really really do like that and nice half cage in the back do like the color as well goes with the wheels nice little touch so it all sort of ties in oh, oh. oh she's making some good bangs now she's uh she's a little bit warmer that man was very 
very nice. He uh, let me out there. I think he liked the car, that's what that was. <laughs> so this is probably the worst bit of road I'm gonna go down today and it's still, it's just so nice to be in. Although it's a little bit rattly, because of course it's an older car, it, it's comfy, it's still comfy, which is exactly how you want it to be. So overall, what do I think of this car? Well, I think it's built properly, which is exactly how you want it to be. It's the perfect combination of being, you know, drifty, so you've got the welded diff, you've got the power that you need, you know, it will go sideways if you want it to, but it's still able to, you know, comfortably take you wherever you need to go. So as a daily, I think this is exactly where the line needs to be drawn. If you're gonna put bucket seats and take all the door cards out and all this sort of business, then I think you're sort of, taking it away from that and you know it don't get me wrong it's down to what you want in a car but i think this is exactly how i would have one i'd have it exactly like this where you still had the interior you still had the comfy seats but it was able to put a huge smile on your face when you do put your foot down the way the uh fucking skoda yeti nearly pulled out in front of me then wanker I now want one, I now want one of these. I now want to, you know, properly get a turboed rear wheel drive Japanese S body. So hopefully one day I can make that dream a reality. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I hope I can pick it up in the camera, but there's a Skoda VRS thingy behind me looking for a bloody race. And he won't be getting any out of me because I do not want to be going sideways in this at X amount of uh, speed. He's obviously well up for it in his bloody diesel though, isn't he? On the modifying side, you can get anything and everything for these cars. So regardless of price, I think you can still have one of these at any price range. If you want a ridiculous one, then you can have a ridiculous one. If you want one that's just standard with a nice set of wheels, you can have that as well. And they're not too hard, you know, they're not too hard to find second-hand parts for as well. I, I see parts for these every day going up for you know next to no money because there's so much there so that's fantastic to me that you're able to take this car and on any budget do what you want with it so guys i hope you like the video make sure you like share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>